Thanks for joining me today. We're gonna to put together this wool felt coffee sleeve that's perfect for gift giving and for adding to your Etsy shop. Grab your supplies and let's get started. So we have our lining fabric, our wool felt, and our pattern piece. What you're gonna do is you're going to interface your wool felt and your lining fabric with your P44F, if that's what you're deciding to use. I suggest interfacing both simply because when you turn this right side out, the lining fabric won't fray, keeps it from uh, coming apart, just a little bit easier. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna place your coffee sleeve pattern piece right side up on the wrong side. So you can see these are right sides together on the lining piece. The reason you do this is because then you know that the left side will be the one that you're gonna put your nick in because these angles are different. They're not the same. So if you, if you arc this all the way across, you can see that there's more on the button side than on the tag side, the loop side. And that's because when this gets wrapped around, I've designed it so that this side is, is close to perfectly vertical here. And that way it won't be on an angle like that. So there's that. So this is how you're gonna do this. And to keep this little pattern piece from shifting around, what you can do is you can hit it with a, um, a little bit of this Aileen's repositionable tacky spray. I like to spray in a box. It just keeps things from getting sticky everywhere. And we get a lot of Amazon stuff here and other places. And so I save the boxes. So that's what I do. I'll put this in the box just like this and shoot it with the aliens. So what you want to do now is take the take a few minutes and cut this out and then we're going to come back and move on from there. All right, our two pieces are cut out. What we want to do now is remove the lining piece. It's going to set it off to the side. And we want to locate, this is how it is, remember? We want to locate the center on this left side and just make a nick. So you just fold it in half. And take your scissors and just make a small nick. Now, if you don't like the idea of um, making a nick on here, you can always slip a pin in right there. Later, when you get to the machine, not now, because you need to embroider this. And so you would take this with you to the machine, locate this little spot here, and then, you know, put your pin in. Um, because now we're going to embroider this. But instead of making the nick, you can do that as well. I just make the nick. I'm not making a quarter inch nick. It's barely a sixteenth of an inch. Um, so now what we want to do is take our hoop, which I've taken my hoop, and I have hooped it up with P44F. I like to use interfacing for my stabilizer. You are more than welcome to do whatever you like doing in your studio. Um, but this is what I prefer to do because I'm frugal. Yes, I'll admit it. I'm very frugal. So how I like to line things up is I will use the grid on my cutting table and I will line it up this way. So I'll line it up vertically. And then these are the center uh, marks horizontally. So I'll use the lines on the table. And then what I wanna do is I wanna take this and spray the back piece right about here because I'm putting it center. I'm gonna put this in my box. Yes, here's my box. It's not beautiful, but it's my box. There it is. I'm gonna put it right in my box and I'm just gonna shoot with a little bit of the uh, Aileen's repositionable tacky spray. Right there, that's it. You don't have to spray the entire thing because the only part that's being stitched is the center. So now what I wanna do is, there's my center. Um, you can nick that too if you want, but you don't have to. And there we go. So that to me is about center. Yes, I can eyeball it. If you want, you can take it and do this. You can take your scissors. And again, little Nick, just something for you to be able to see. I can see it, it's right there. 
And I'll use that line. And there we go. And so this is my five by seven hoop. And I know that between there and there, that's four inches, which is roughly the cutout height of this little coffee sleeve. So now I know I'm centered. And so now I can take this to the machine, I'm gonna hoop it up and I'm gonna let it stitch itself out. So on my embroidery machine, I have the ability to scan the hoop and then see where the design is going to be. And I'm showing you this for the purpose of, we did get it centered because when I loaded the design, it was already centered on the screen. And then I just scanned this and you can see right down here, this is the bottom arc of the um, coffee sleeve and up here is the top arc. So we do have it centered, we're good to go. So now what I have to do is choose my colors and I have my um, brother 10 needle. It's a Entrepreneur Pro PR1000E. I have it set up so that I just pick where I want it to pull from. So you can see in the background, um, you can see two spools of thread, a green back here, right back there, and behind that one is a, a white thread. So those are two of the spools out of the 10 that are on this machine currently. So what I do now, I am going to tap on a little button at the lower portion of this um, screen. You can see it, this little button right here. And now it pops up with all of the, the numbers, one through 10. So I just pick and choose whatever colors I wanna do. And I know that brown, which is what I wanna do for the inside of this cup is on spool number six. So I tap six, I move down the cup itself. I, I, I wanna make it a bright red and I have bright red on nine. So I'm gonna hit nine, I'm gonna go down. I need a light green for the leaves. And uh, I have two greens on my machine and the light green is at two and the dark green is actually at four. That's just a coincidence. And then um, for the wording, I want it to be black and the black is on spool one. And um, then the word holiday is gonna be in red, but I want it to be a deeper red. And I have that on 10. So I'm just gonna hit 10. So now I'm gonna hit close. I'm gonna go to sewing and it's gonna show me that I have mine stitching out at um, 800 stitches per minute. You can see that in the lower right hand corner here. And I can change that and do 900 or I can do a thousand and you can see how it's changing the time. It, it doesn't. <laughs> so, to, well, and maybe a minute, I don't know. Um, what was it at for a thousand? Yeah, still at eight. So um, when I slow it down, to the seven, 800 range, it 90% of the time never breaks the thread. When I'm at a thousand, I find it doesn't break the thread. It pulls it out of the needle when it cuts it. So I'm just gonna leave it around 700 so I can walk away and do other things. So now I'm just gonna hit lock on my machine and I'm gonna hit go. And now it's gonna move and it's gonna start to embroider. And I'll be more than happy to show you what's happening. So right now, what it's doing is the coffee or the hot cocoa. And that's, for some reason, when it pulls it out. And we're just gonna let it do its thing and continue to stitch out the rest of the design. Our design is done stitching out and we can pop it out of our hoop. You can see it's nice and centered. The beauty of this P44F is uh, at this point, if you wanted to iron it to the back, even though you already have interfacing on the back of uh, this wool piece, you could, because it's that thin. Otherwise, you can just take some scissors and just trim around. Easy peasy. 
It also tears nicely too, you can see that. Now, some might want to trim these. I don't, no point. It's just going to get covered. So I just don't see the point of uh, trimming that. Seems like kind of a waste of my time. So now this is all done. And what we want to do is grab one of our hair ties and we're going to position it on that left hand side where we made that notch and we're going to sew that in. So that is our next step. So let's take it to the sewing machine and tack that down. We are ready to stitch in our little loop that we're going to be using to hold on to the button. And all you want to do is uh, pitch it about halfway, maybe, maybe two thirds of the way. And you just want to stitch it and tack it down at about an eighth of an inch. If you have a larger button, you're going to want to have more loop to grab. If you have a smaller button, you're going to want to have um, a, a smaller size loop. I'm using a button that's about three quarters of an inch in size. And now I'm just going to hold it and then I'm going to go back over it. And that's it. It's that simple. And then I'm going to trim it, but I'm not going to cut off the loop. There's no point. If you cut it now, you might cut that and just leave it. For now, it's just fine. So now what we want to do is grab our lining fabric and we're going to pin it in place and then we're going to stitch around. I have my lining fabric and I'm just going to put it on this right sides together on my exterior wool felt piece and I'm just going to pin around to hold it in place. You guys know I, if you've watched my videos, you know I don't love pins. I poke myself, I bleed, I don't enjoy it. It's just my thing, I don't like pins. I, I know I've told this story before but when I first learned to sew, I went around and pinned everything. My mom came out looking for the pins. And the only reason I'm telling this again is because some of you haven't heard it. And she said, where's the pins? It was like a box of a hundred. And when she looked, my pants that I was making were pinned one right after another because it was a paper pattern and you pinned it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Poked myself a lot that day. That's okay. I now use tape, but for this tiny little project, just gonna use some pins. And yeah, I may have overpinned it still. I'm an overpinner, what can I say? I, I can't help it. Um, all right, so what we're gonna wanna do is start at any end. I'm just gonna do the loop end, and I'm stitching at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I'm right next to the edge of the foot because this is a quarter inch foot. And I'm just gonna get going. The end we're gonna birth it from is that opposite end. so. You'll see what we're going to do when we get to that. Now I'm coming up and you might be wondering what this yellow stuff is on my, my sewing machine here. This is tape by 3M. I think it's called Expressions. I have another video about it. But each one works as a guide for something on my machine. So I have this positioned. You can see it right here. The 12 represents the zero, all right? And it's lined up perfectly with this needle. So as I'm stitching, when I get to any of these lines, after you've been doing it a while, you'll know where you're at. When I get to this line, I know I'm at a quarter of an inch and that's because I sew a lot at a quarter of an inch. I know that when I get there, that's where I'm gonna pivot. So I just hit it. And now I'm gonna make sure that my needle's on the way up. So I know that it grabbed the bobbin thread. I'm gonna pivot and I'm just gonna sew. And I'm going to go all the way across. All right, same deal. Using my little edge here, I'm at the half mark. Do, 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 do. Oh, there we are. It's five, what is that? Three eighths. Boom, we're at a quarter of an inch. All right, I'm going to pull out that pin. Make sure my needle's on the way up. And it is, so I catch it. I'm going to rotate. All right, so now here's the deal. You can either mark this with um, a pen and your ruler, or you can just eyeball it. You guys know I eyeball a lot. So right there, and again over here, there's no point in marking this ahead of time. It doesn't make this any faster. So just 
do it as you're sewing. That's why it's really nice to have this little ruler. It's an OmniGrid ruler. It is six inches by one inch. And I just keep it next to my machine. I have little buckets all over the place. Um, it's just, I like little rulers. So now what I'm gonna do is proceed to this dot. When I get there, stop, backstitch, and then continue. When I get to this next one, I'm gonna take a stitch past it, which again, you know, I eyeball. I'm about there. I'm gonna take a stitch past. I'm gonna move this pin so I don't knock it. And then I'm gonna backstitch. All right, and then I'm gonna continue. And I am, yep, I hit it. So now I'm gonna rotate, needles on its way up, rotate, and continue. I don't like turning it at the bottom. It's just more work. More work to make it look pretty. So, now I'm gonna pivot again. I'm gonna pull out these pins. Some pins you can sew over, just, just works out that way. Some, not so much. Uh, I find that my industrial has no problem sewing over pins and almost never hitting them. Whereas to my, my domestic, I always hit pins. It was very annoying. All right, so now I'm gonna go and go past my little thing here. I'm gonna veer off into the seam allowance. and I'm gonna back up, I'm gonna sew backwards. Why am I doing this, you might wonder? I just wanna tack down that. One more little tickety tack right there. That's all. And now I'm gonna trim it and we're gonna remove the pins and I'm gonna show you how to easily trim this up and berth it. So we're done stitching and I removed the pins and now all you wanna do is trim the corners up and you just go across it at an angle. The, less, the least amount of fabric you can put in those corners, the better. It will sit more like a corner than like a bunched up hot mess. And just don't catch the stitches when you do this. All right, so we did that. Now what you also wanna do is take your seam ripper and you want to open up the stitching that we did between the two blue dots our three quarter inch marks, because that's where we're gonna birth it. And then what you also wanna do is trim off this little extra tab we have from the hair tie. It's useless, toss it. So now we're gonna take this over to the iron and we are going to steam these corners so we can poke them out with our uh, fun little pokey stick. Okay, so all we wanna do here, this is not difficult. I'm just gonna do these corners. These corners first, simply because they're the ones that are gonna to come to this side. Just gonna put your little thumb in there. And poke, that's it. This is not a tough task. That's it. And then you're gonna to wanna to take your point turner and poke it into those corners. You can use all sorts of things. Yes, I have this little point turner here, but you can also use a uh, chopstick. Very easy. That's it, don't get too aggressive because you, if you do, you're gonna poke a hole in it. And I, I'm fairly confident you won't like how that turns out. And so now all you wanna do is flatten it out, hit it a little, make sure your iron is clean because you will regret that you didn't clean it prior to. And again, I'm just poking my finger in and popping, it's that easy. And this is the only side now that we have to worry about. It's not a very big space. You didn't need a lot of space. Um, the beauty of this is that there is no batting, so we don't have to worry about batting. And then you just poke this back in along with the wool felt. Everything's poked in. And what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna pin it back at the machine. So it's nice and even, and then we're gonna top stitch all the way around. And you can even iron this if you want, but it's not necessary. 
So let's take this back to the machine and um, do our top stitching and tack our button on and call it a day. So now all we have to do is fold these edges in. I just like to fold them in and I'll finger press them. That's it, squeezing them hard, finger pressing. And then I'll pin it. I find great satisfaction pinning felt, don't know why. I just do, just it goes in very smoothly, no matter what pin I'm using. And now I'm gonna stitch around um, at an eighth of an inch. This is my narrow hinged foot and it's probably my favorite foot. I'm gonna start on the side that I need to close. I lengthened my stitch and we're just gonna go all the way around. Pull out the pins as I get to them. And remember when we get to those bottom corners, always make sure that the needle's on the way up or you're gonna have, it's not gonna be, you're, it's gonna be an angle. Now, if your design was big and it came down to the stitch line, don't worry about it, just stitch around it. Or if you get to it, back stitch, cut it, pull the, back, pull the thread to the back, tie it off, and then start past it. It'll just look like it's a design element. And I hand crank when I get to the edge if I want it to be real close, which I do. I can see I can take one more itty bitty stitch right there. All right, I'm gonna go across the top now. Now I'm gonna trim this before I hit it. And the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna land in those stitches. That's just me. You don't have to. And now I'm gonna stitch down and I'm gonna aim for those stitches and I hit it, perfect. And all you wanna do when you get to them is backstitch over them. That's it, and you're done. Boom, done, hooba dooby. Hooba dooby, all right. Look at that, it's all turned up. Now, the very last thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, pick out a button and throw a button on it. So, I've got my button jar here. And I have lots and lots and lots of buttons. I have Christmas tree, I think it's too big. And that one, some of these are just adorable. Like that snowman is super cute. Um, I have all these buttons because I buy stuff from Bloomery uh, online. And you always get a couple little buttons in your your, your purchase. And I just save them in my little jar here. So, um, oh, this one's cute too. So there's that one as well. I don't, I don't want the mermaid. I don't know what that is. And I don't need a butterfly. I'm not a butterfly gal. So any of these would work. Uh, I think these would actually work. I just, I don't know. It's already kind of a pretty thing here. So um, I am going to do the green one. So what you want to do, again, we're eyeballing. Um, I, the reason I, I do a lot of stuff that I eyeball is because it's kind of one of those learning things is that you, by eyeballing on simple projects like this, you learn how to eyeball, which is necessary when you're sewing. Cause if you're constantly reaching for your ruler, you're slowing yourself down. Now, if you're doing this for the joy of it, and you don't care if you're slowed down, then by all means, pre-mark everything and go at it that way. Um, but even when I'm sewing for the joy of sewing, I just like to eyeball. So um, I know this is three and a quarter inches, right? So instead of trying to do math, which I can do it, I don't wanna, uh, I'm just gonna back this up to three and an eighth. And I know that half a three is one and a half. So right about there is where I need to put my my button. And my button needs to be about an inch in or so. Inch, I think an inch is sufficient. So we're gonna put it right, right there. See, for this one, I believe an inch is, is pretty good. If you go, you can go an inch and a half, it's fine. Um, 
but I think an inch is good where you want to tack it. Again, eyeballing, so right about there. Now, you can tack it this way or you can tack it this way. I'm going to tack it this way. You can hand sew it on or you can do it with the foot. I'm going to show you how I do it with my sewing machine. Okay, so to help you guys out, I did a little um, I did a little marking here. I am placing this particular button based on its size, like I said, an inch or so in. The sew for me is going to be about a quarter of an inch, an inch additional. So um, put it in, put tack the, the button down between one and a quarter inches and one and a half inches. Either one works just fine. So now what you want to do, since I know that's where it needs to go, I am going to tack it using my machine. Now I, if you're new to using a domestic, you want it to sew as slow as possible because you're not actually going to be sewing. You're just tacking it. So what you're doing is hand cranking it and I'm extending it to five so that I get the longest stitch and I'm dropping into this hole. That's it. Now you can easily go and I'm gonna spin it around, right? And I'm gonna take another stitch and go back to the first hole. If you want to keep your button from moving, you can put a little piece of tape on the back, but you don't have to. Now, instead of it going forward, you can also just lift the foot, drop it. And this is all I do to tack a button in for something like this, because I don't like hand tacking. Now, you could make a bunch of these, go sit on the couch, put on a Christmas movie on the Hallmark Channel or whatever you dig. I would probably put jaws on and uh, hand tack all of them just with needle and thread. I also have some issues in my house finding needle. I, I, this is what I do for a living. And I often can't find a needle. And this is it. So now I'm just hand cranking it and I'm lifting and moving it. I know my machine really well. She doesn't scare me. And some machines, if you're on a domestic, actually, which I think is very cool, have the ability to do a tack down stitch for buttons. It's awesome. And so if you have that, grab your manual, learn it, do it, love it. All right, so I left it long. Want to see why? This is why. I'm going to give it a little tug with the bobbin thread that's on the back. And you can, you, you, when you do this, you're going to see a loop come up. That loop is the front thread, the top thread. I'm just going to pull it to the back. Now you're gonna see it's no longer there. I pulled it to the back and I'm just gonna tie it. I'm gonna tie it in uh, a knot. One, 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 one. Um, and another one. This is where I would use my hemostats, which I'll be carrying in my shop shortly. But my hemostats aren't, hemostats are not up here. They are in the back where my thread is. I also use them to thread my machine because I have old eyes. And that's it. So now what you want to do is just trim all these other threads off. Doo -doo. And then you can grab your little mug. And this is all you do. Put your loop, your little loopity loop, right around here. See how cute? It's cute. The back is just as cute as the front. That's it. That's all she wrote. I mean, it's just a simple, fun little project um, that you can do for gifts. You can do to add to your store. You can do to um, easily add as an additional gift that you want to give to, um, say it's one of your regular clients, you know, these are just great. They don't weigh a lot. And you can see that that spot, this, this side is, um, vertical. There's no angle to it. So if you, if you were to put the button back a little further, it would just slide up a little higher. If you put the button a little further this way, it's not going to make much of a difference because it's elastic. So there you go. A little cup of holiday cheer.
Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed that tutorial. Um, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask. You can head over and join my group too, and you can ask questions in there. If you want the hard copy of the pattern with the pattern piece for free, go ahead and join the group because that's where it's going to be uh, sitting at in the files. Otherwise, I suggest you head over to my Etsy shop and it will be a dollar. So this is it. Hope you love it. I hope you guys have a great holiday season. Cheers, everybody.